Okay, Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Alright, uh, so now we continue the chapter summary for chapter 7, Oscillations and Wave. So last time we have done 7.1 until 7.3 and for this time we'll continue 7.4 until 7.7. .7. Okay, for 7.4 we have properties of wave. So for 7.4, we have the equation of wave that is y is equal to a sine omega t plus minus kx. So if you look at this equation, the pattern of the equation is just quite the same with the pattern of simple harmonic motion. Because when we talk about wave, we are actually talking about two things that are the first one is we talk about particle. Okay, and also we talk about wave propagating. So when the wave is propagating, the particle is vibrating. So we are talking about two movements at the same time. Okay, we have an important term here that is the first one is the omega is angular frequency or angular velocity. It's 2 pi f or 2 pi over period. And also we have k. So k is the wave number and we have the equation for k. k is 2 pi over lambda. Okay. And for this wave equation, okay, we call it as wave equation. We have this plus minus sign here. So plus means the wave propagate to the left. And minus means the wave propagate to the right. So this is the direction of the wave propagation. Apart from that, we also have uh, another special term when we have the particle vibration. We will also have the particle velocity. So the equation for particle velocity is A omega cos omega t plus minus kx. And also we have another velocity that that is the velocity of the wave. So V is equal to frequency times the wavelength. Under the same subtopic, that is 7.4, we also have the graph sketching. So from the equation, we have the wave equation is Y equal to A sine omega t plus minus kx. So from this equation, you have uh, two possibility of uh, graph. The first one is graph of y against x so when y against x the time must be constant and another graph is y against t and for this type of graph so your x must be constant we cannot have graph of uh, two variables changing okay so we have two possible variables that will be changing in this equation so based on the equation for y against x so you are going to have the graph of, for example, t is constant. So you will have, uh, for example, t is 0. You'll have the sine graph. This is x and this is y. Okay, As usual, when you plot the graph, you have to put the sine, the unit, and you have to label the amplitude. And also the wavelength, that is the length for one, the length of wave. For one oscillation, we call it as wavelength. And for y against t graph, so it's minimum, you have to have at least one oscillation, so one period, and this is your amplitude. The next subtopic is 7.5. 7.5 is superposition of wave, so this is actually... Um, explaining uh, specifically about the standing wave or the other name for standing wave is stationary wave so basically this wave is actually uh, the combination or superposition of two individual wave so your y for standing wave is actually the summation or the superposition of two or more individual wave or we call it as progressive wave number one progressive wave number two so these two progressive waves must be equal in terms of the amplitude the frequency the wavelength and so on so the only difference between these two individual waves is at its direction 
So these two waves must be coming from opposite direction. That is the condition how to get the standing wave or how to produce the standing wave. So we have a general equation, for example, A sine omega t plus kx plus A sine omega t minus kx. Okay, or is it is moving to the right. Okay, so using the mathematics operations, it, it has a quite a lot of steps. And we come up with a standing wave equation that is y is equal to 2a cos kx sine omega t. Okay, so this is the standing wave equation. So again, we have k as 2 pi over lambda, omega is 2 pi over period or 2 pi f. And the next subtopic, that is subtopic 7.6, is the application of standing wave. So basically, we have uh, three types or three applications of standing wave. This, the first one is the stretch string, second one is closed pipe, and the third one is open end pipe. So for the stretch string, basically you'll have okay, this string. And when it is vibrating, it will form this form of standing wave. So this is not the simplest pattern. So when we mention standing wave, on the pattern of the standing wave, we'll have uh, this part of zero displacement. It is called as node. And this part of maximum displacement is called as anti-node. Okay, so we can see this pattern from the stress string. And the equation for the stress string uh, for the frequency of the uh, vibration is f n is equal to n v over two l. Okay, n is the number of harmonic. Okay, so for stress string we have all harmonics: harmonic number one, number two, number three, and so on. Okay, so apart from harmonic, we also have tone. Okay, that is for the first harmonic, it is equal to fundamental tone. For the second harmonic, it is first overtone. And for the third harmonic, it is the second overtone. Okay, and from this equation, we also have velocity. Okay, for the stretch string, we have the specific equation for the velocity is V is equal to square root tension over mu, which is mu is actually the mass per unit length. So that's the first case. Our second case is the closed end pipe. The, this is how it looks like. Okay. So when we have wave okay, going uh, to this closed pipe, so there'll be reflected wave. And these two waves will superpose. And the standing wave will be produced because of the air particle. Okay, the, the displacement of the air particle. So basically for the case of closed pipe and, and open end pipe, you cannot see clearly this pattern, but we are actually interpret uh, the particle uh, displacement uh, in this closed end pipe. Okay, and the pattern of the graph is for the simplest, for example, for the simplest pattern, it will be like this. So at this position, it is anti node. So here is node. So basically, the air particle here is freely to vibrate. The air particle here cannot vibrate. So the equation for closed end pipe is n v over 4 l. Okay, so uh, v is the <coughs> velocity of wave. Okay, for this closed end pipe case, it is special because we have only odd harmonic. Okay, meaning that our n here is started from 1, then followed by 3. 5 and so on. We only have odd number for the number of harmonics. Okay, then proceed with the case of open pipe and again with the same concept, it is about particle vibration. So at the end, for the simplest pattern, at this part, anti node, the air is freely vibrating and also at this part. Okay, this is the simplest pattern. And for open end pipe, it is all harmonic. So basically, if you compare these two situations for stretch string and the open end pipe, the equations for both cases are the same, exactly the same.
Okay, for the last subtopic for this chapter, it is Doppler effect. So we have an equation for Doppler effect that is to Fa is equal to V plus minus VO divided by V plus minus Vs times Fs. To solve the equation related to the to Doppler effect, we have to know all the meaning, all the quantities. So Fa basically is the apparent frequency. Is the frequency heard by an observer? Fs is the frequency of the sound or the source of the sound. It has its own frequency. Vo is velocity of observer. V is the velocity of sound normally given in the question. Okay, is 300 something. And the last one is the velocity of the source of sound. Okay, so you if if you could see clearly from the equation, we have plus minus at the top here and plus minus at the bottom here. So what it is telling us is actually this is this equation can be used for four different situations. Uh, let me give you an example. So let's say we have an ambulance. So all of us know that the ambulance has its siren at the top and this siren is all is of course producing sound okay or exactly we can mention it as okay sound wave then uh, we have an observer so if let's say this uh, ambulance is moving towards the observer okay and this observer is stationary so vo is equal to zero okay so we can see here that or you can think of that the wave front okay the wave will be close to each other okay or bahasa melayunya kita akan cakap wave tu macam terpenyek macam tu okay and the wave behind will be quite far from each other so at this part okay the wavelength is high at this part okay the wavelength is high as the ambulance is approaching this observer so when the wavelength is high, the frequency is frequency apparent frequency is low, and for this part, the wavelength the wavelength should be just about the same. Uh, you have to like mind my drawing. So the wavelength is low and the frequency is high. Okay. So let's say we have a case. Let's say we have uh, we want to get an equation for this case of approaching. Okay approaching so from the equation is fa is equal to v so our vo is equal to zero so at the top we only have v and at the bottom we have v plus minus vs times the fs so now we need to think of uh, is uh, is either to choose plus or minus so we will go back to this case so as the ambulance is approaching the observer, the frequency is high. Using mathematics, uh, to get the high frequency here, your denominator here must be low. Okay, hence we'll choose negative. Hence our equation is V minus Vs. So this is how you choose your equation. Remember you'll have are the three equations that is possible for the case of Doppler effect. Okay, thank you. So that's the chapter summary for part two, chapter seven. Thank you very much.